Today's video is sponsored by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar experts and community projects in your area. And if you're in the state of California, keep watching to find out how you'll want to get your solar project permits submitted to your utility before California switches to net metering 3.0. It is the second week of February and love is in the air for Valentine's Day. And if you are celebrating with a special person or people, I hope your day is truly wonderful and that you get to celebrate your special relationships in a way that feels appropriate for all of you. Love is, of course, a very personal thing. How we feel about others can sometimes be tough to put into tangible terms, but it's often said that love isn't always logical. And at this time of year, there are plenty of trashy features in newspapers, magazines, online and on TV that try and tell you just how you can find that special someone. Today, though, in the second of our four-part series on getting solar at home, I'm going to turn that a little on its side, and instead of telling you how to find the perfect person to fall in love with, I'm going to explain how you can fall in love with solar power that you can use to charge your EV. But just like the very best relationships, it's going to require some work from all sides. <laughs> If you've already watched our first video, it was on solar terms you should know, I'm hoping that you're already familiar with some of the basic terminology I'm going to use in today's video. But if you've not already seen it, I'll make sure there's a link in the description so you can go back and review it whenever you want. Just like a good relationship begins with finding someone who is a good match for you, figuring out exactly what you need and what you can physically accommodate on the roof of your home is a good first step in developing that perfect relationship with solar. And that starts by becoming familiar with how much energy you use at home and also when you use that energy. A good starting place is to look at your utility bill. Not so long ago, this came in the form of a multi-page statement through your mail, but more and more utility companies today are working digitally, allowing you to examine your energy use in real time, or at least a few days behind. Of course, figuring out how to read your bill can be a bit daunting, because the chances are that there are a whole heap of different lines and numbers that ultimately add up to the amount you're being asked to pay. And depending on where you live, that utility bill might include multiple different sources of energy, like combining your electricity bill with natural gas and water bills. If you're going to add solar to your home or sign up for a community solar project, you're going to need to know how much electricity on average you consume. So you your first task is to figure out where those lines are in your bill. Luckily, water, gas and electricity consumption are all measured differently. Water is measured in gallons or litres. Gas consumption is measured in either British thermal units, that's BTU, cubic feet or in metric countries, cubic metres. Electricity is measured in kilowatt hours. And reminder, if you're not sure what a kilowatt hour is, check out that first part of our video series to find out. Depending on where you live and what your local utility offers, you may also see multiple line items listing electricity consumption in kilowatt hours. This is because utility companies usually charge a different amount for the first 1000 kilowatt hours of electricity consumed and then charge a higher rate for subsequent kilowatt hours in a billing cycle. You may also see a different line item for different electrical rates if your utility offers time of use metering known in some markets as cheap rate or economy. If your utility offers this, you probably already know about it, as you'll pay less to use power at certain times of the day or night than you would at other times. You'll also likely see some other line items listed that pertain to electrical charges. These are surcharges added to your bill to cover things like the cost of generation and or transmission of the electricity you use, as well as other taxes and fees required by local regulations. These certainly increase the amount of money that you pay for your electricity, but they don't affect the total amount of energy in kilowatt hours that you consume. 
To figure that out, you'll need to look at the total amount of energy you've consumed in kilowatt hours over your billing cycle and add those up. Sometimes your utility company will do it for you. And if you have a smart meter in your home and your utility lets you read total consumption online, as my utility does, you may be able to get that information directly from your utility's web portal or accompanying smartphone app. Once you have your total consumption over the course of your billing cycle, divide that by the total number of days in the cycle, but be careful because billing cycles are rarely the same month to month, and you will have a good idea of an average consumption per day in kilowatt hours. Now, this number is super important because it will help you figure out not only how much energy you need to generate at home or through a community solar project to offset your consumption, but it also helps you predict what your total energy savings will be down the line. Of course, when it comes to dating, you should really get to know the other person before you make a big commitment together, which means multiple dates over several months or more to make sure that you are a good fit. And in the energy world, the equivalent of more dates is more data. How they treating you, boy? Real bad, Paul. I ain't fed me since I got here and that sheriff's been roughing up on me something fierce. Don't you worry, boy. Sheriff's gonna pay. No, not more data, uh, more... You know what I mean. <laughs> you can, of course, get this by looking back through different bills spaced at different times in the year. But one way of making sure you have more granular data is to invest in an energy monitoring system. There are plenty of cool options available from plug and play units that you can buy online to monitor specific outlets through to more in-depth systems that require you to fit clamps around certain cables in your fuse box or distribution center. And of course, if you have a smart home distribution panel like a span panel or similar like I have, you'll be able to easily monitor every breaker's circuit for power consumption. And with that data, you can get a really good idea averaged out over different times of the year to know exactly what your actual real world energy consumption is or might be in the future. Remember though, that just as your solar production will change according to the time of year, so too will your electrical consumption, especially if you use electricity for heating in winter. Next, before you commit to solar, you should also make sure your home is already as efficient as possible using the data that you just collected. This includes making sure you turn off appliances when they're not in use, that you confirm your doors and windows properly seal and don't have massive air gaps in them, and that all of your appliances are operating correctly. Sometimes a failing stove or dryer can consume far more electricity than it did when new, and being able to identify poorly performing appliances can help you save money with or without solar. Oh, and if you have a heat pump system in your home, an electrical water heater or an electric air heating system, make sure you follow recommended service practices to ensure they're not completely fuzzed up with dusty filters or rusty elements because they can also really impact your overall home energy efficiency. Once you've done all of that, the next step is to go back and watch our first video if you haven't. The more familiar you are with solar terms, the easier it will be to have a discussion about your needs for your home. Good relationships rely on good communication, so you'll want to know if you have a grid tied or an off-grid solution in the future. Do you live in an area with net meterings and do you want to have a battery backup solution along with those solar panels? Answering these questions before you involve a solar installer not only means you're more likely going to be able to pick a system that really suits your needs, but you'll all have the information on hand that you're usually asked by an installer when you're looking for quotes for your home. Which brings me to the next step and today's video sponsor, Energy Sage. Energy Sage is an online service in the US that helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers who 
really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels on the roof of your home and can connect you with a community solar program if you need to. We used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of this house and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union to help us finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. And if you live in California, now is the perfect time to go solar to maximise those savings because the new state policy, net metering 3.0, goes into effect at 5pm Pacific on April 14th, 2023. And that will drop your potential solar savings by 60%. So in order to qualify for the current higher savings, you will want to get in touch with local installers now to lock in your home to avoid price gouging, high sales pressure tactics, and to get quotes from trusted verified installers, just follow that link below to sign up for Energy Sage's free no obligation service and get that ball rolling today. If you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your solar project though, we will get a small referral fee, so you will be helping the channel as well. Of course, understanding all those solar terms and understanding what your system demands are will help set up healthy expectations in your relationship with solar and it will also help you evaluate the quotes offered by any solar installers you talk to. You'll likely see different companies offering different packages with prices varying accordingly. And just like any good relationship, knowing the boundaries of what you expect from your own system will help you know if the system is Ms, Mr or Mux right. For example, if you are someone who lives in a fairly rural area where the power grid goes out a lot in winter, hello, you may opt for a smaller solar system paired with some on-site backup batteries, while if your grid is stable, maybe you'll opt for a larger solar array and no battery backup. Understanding how the sun crosses your sky is also important because that will impact your daily generation, and it will also help you pick the best setup for you. And if you are particularly interested in the look of your system, you should also pay attention to how the panels you're being proposed look on the home. Because we are all about power here rather than curbside appeal, we actually opted for panels that were rated to a higher power level for industrial applications, but had silver trim around them. Some people would want their solar panels to be super sexy black all over, and they wouldn't want them, and that's okay too. Different strokes for different folks. Finally, be sure to pay attention to all of the promises and obligations laid out in the quotes you just received. Like any good relationship, knowing what you're you're expected to do and what they're expected to do is a success to a happy relationship and knowing who to call when things go wrong can really help prevent a bumpy road ahead. So there you have it. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and it's a perfect time to hook up with the perfect panels. Why don't you give it a go? And if you have, tell us about your relationship successes with Solar below. And on that note, we are done with today's video. And if you want to know more about the classic Mac behind me, stick around until after the credits. If you like this video, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room, link below. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow us to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to Kofi, Bitcoin and our swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon, we have our very own server and I've gone back and made sure it's linked to in all of our videos to this point. Scrolling on my right is a list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters. They are Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Mora Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazlet in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Raging Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asenta, and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world thanks to our Starman level supporters, Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and... Ian. Finally, thanks to Energy Sage for supporting this video. Don't forget to follow that link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make that step towards energy self-sufficiency, either with solar on the roof of your home or by joining a local community solar project. We'll be back soon with more great content, but until then, keep evolving. 
So in case you haven't seen this Pismo G3 power book, uh, it's one of my collection. It's one of my oldest machines and I'm hoping to put an SSD in it so far. Thanks to those of you who reached out and said, hey, I might have a monitor or a cube that you can use so you can have an appropriate monitor to put on set with your G4s. I'm going to be reaching out. It's been a really very, very busy couple of weeks. I'm about to have oral surgery tomorrow. So I will do my best to reach out. I'm not ignoring you and I really appreciate your support and kindness. Oh, and for those who want to know, words are indeed hard. If you don't know about Evan and Caitlin, go check out their YouTube channel.